Now, how about this one? Here's the normal dermis here. Sometimes it's helpful to see the, the uh, normal dermis and then the abnormal dermis. Because sometimes dermis is hard to evaluate the collagen and the cellularity unless you have normal to compare it to at the side. With practice, you can recognize it. But even for me, if I get a punch of all abnormal dermis, if it's subtle, it can be take me a few seconds to pick up on it when I first look at the slide. And then I'm like, wait a second, this dermis is kind of weird. But it's a lot more noticeable when you can see the normal collagen pattern and then this. So now what is this? What's going on from 2X? Is this one a dermatofibroma? This is a dermatofibroma. Very good. Very and good. Some epithelial induction. Also. Yeah, this has got nice induction over it. Like that last one had a little subtle hyperplasia, and which sometimes DFs just have subtle, but this one's got a lot. Look at the normal epidermis, and then the epidermis gets much longer reedy. Some of them are flattened or blunted at the bottom, but more impressive than that. And and of course we have increased pigment, which is the most common thing we see is is elongated reedy, flattened or blunted or tabled, whatever name you like at the bottom, with increased melanin pigment in the keratinocytes. And that's why a lot of dermatofibromas look brown clinically. But then also we begin to see some basaloid little buds coming off the epidermis with kind of a spindly and myxoidy sort of stroma around them. And this is basically not, this is not basal cell carcinoma. This is benign hair follicle induction. These are little baby immature hair follicle roots that are starting to grow. And for some reason, dermatofibroma often makes the epidermis over it grow and change in different ways with the epidermal hyperplasia, the pigment, and some cases we'll get um, variable amounts of hair follicle, hair root development that can mimic basal cells. So if we're on a test, if you think it looks like a basal and there's a DF under it, the answer is no. It's just a dermatofibroma with benign follicular induction. In real life, I've actually seen a small handful of cases of true basal cell carcinoma arising out of or over a dermatofibroma. And one of them actually had benign induction and basal cell over a big, huge dermatofibroma. You can see that I've got that case uh, visual side of it on Kiko. So weird stuff happens, right? Now look, the spindle cells here, this could be a little harder because it's a really dense collagen here. It looks almost scar-like. So some dermatofibromas are very sclerotic. Some of them are kind of scar-like. The thing that helps me tell that this is not scar even from low power is the epidermal change. Scar usually will have atrophy and loss of the reedy over top of it, whereas DF will be the opposite. But if you just had an area like this, I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell you that's dermatofibroma. That could be, you know, chronic lymphedema, sclerotic changes, or stasis, or, or the edge of a scar, or something else. In the middle, though, the spindle cells start looking more, you know, classic here. And we've got entrapment of little collagen bundles, little pink collagen bundles, wrapped around by the spindle cells. And the spindle cells can be bland and thin. They can also be plump and a little atypical. The cytology can run the range of features in dermatofibromas, and you can have very hypocellular sclerotic ones, and then all the way up to really big cellular deep ones. All dermatofibroma has a huge wide spectrum, okay? That's why I don't, don't go straight to the spindle cells. Look at the pattern from low power, particularly for dermatofibromas, because the, the least important thing is the cytology of the cells, usually. Um, most important thing is what the epidermis is doing, how it interfaces with the surrounding dermis, how it interfaces with the underlying fat. And usually there's not very much involvement of the fat, but some cases can trap fat a little bit or extend deeply into fat. There's weird exceptions outside the scope of what we're talking about today. So that's kind of a sclerotic example of dermatofibroma.